Hello and welcome tonight to the Greenwood Lady Gators basketball game. Yeah, tonight we come to you live from the swamp, bringing you some Lady Gator basketball here as they take on the Purples. I'm Tyler Porter and joining me, working camera and color commentating, is Drew Porter. And here we go. Purples are going to start with the ball after the tip off. It's coming downtown. Meadow Tisdale takes it in and gets quick points for the Purples to start out this game. So it seems that the Lady Gators are playing sort of a very tight man-to-man -man scheme, and the Purples seem to be matching that. Um, so it'll be very hard for anybody to get open. Heavy press there by the Purples as the Gators struggle to get onto offense. And Avery Overmull appears to be hurt. I think she got hit in the eye, which is not good. She has had incredible past couple of weeks for the Gators. It is tough to see her go out. She dropped 20 against South Warren when they played earlier this month. Definitely a big loss for the Gators. Hopefully they can get her back out here. It's now purple ball, and that's going to be number three, Saniya Shelton, who joined two other purples this year in the 1,000-point club. Purple's having quite a year. Tisdale guarded by Lovell, and she gets a rebound and shoots again. It does not fall, but this time Olivia Lovell recovers the rebound. Now Trend bringing it down the floor. Trin's going to step inside, but she passes it out. Peterson at the point, and that is McCorkle for three. She's going to miss. Peterson shoots from the free throw line, also misses, and Tisdale recovers. So it looks a lot like the Lady Gators are playing a out on the perimeter game. You know, they're passing it around the perimeter, trying to see if they can get anything open inside, and if they can't, they're just taking the shots from the uh, from the perimeter. So that seems to be the offensive scheme that they are playing tonight. Yep. Sanaya Shelton for the Purples will make that goal. Now Olivia Lovell, double screen. That's going to be number 12, Tanaya Bailey, comes up and gets that ball from Leia Trin. That's going to be a timeout here on the floor. So a bit of a rough start here for the Gators. They're down 4-0 in this first minute and a half. Gators just haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Drew, what do you think is the key to breaking down through this press and, and keeping going, getting this Gator offense started? Because we know when the Gators can shoot, they can shoot. So how can they break this press and get in there? You know, this is going to sound a lot like what I said during the volleyball games, but momentum, right? You know, you got to like, you got to get the momentum of passing down so that way you can hit everybody who can hit their open shots because a lot of these people can hit their open shots. So you just got to get the momentum of passing it around, um, around the perimeter, in the inside, you know, anywhere, and everyone can hit their open shots. Yeah, Purple's having some tenacious D. That's Husky guarding Trin there. Trin's going to bring it in. Shoots from inside, and it's not going to fall. That's going to be picked up by Sanaya Shelton. That is recovered by Olivia Overmull. She's going to pass to JoJo McCorkle. Bit of a handoff there. McCorkle brings down. Huskies in the mix. So is Tisdale. Trends fighting for it. It's all over the place. Shelton's going to bring it down. That shot's going to be blocked by Lovell. Big block there for Olivia Lovell, the senior for the Gators. And now JoJo McCorkle will bring it down. They're looking. Gators feed it to Trin. Trin shoots and misses. Now Tanaya Bailey passes it to Sanaya Shelton, and Sanaya Shelton gets her fourth points of the game. Like I said earlier, the Gators just need to, you know, they got to pass it around. 
the Purples are playing very, very tight defense, and so you just got to pass it around to your open people. Yeah, the Purples know they can get the Gators on this press, so they're trying to start the press early, hold the Gators to as few points as possible, and the Gators are going to have to break through this. Husky fights with Lovell. Looks like that's going to be a jump ball. Oh, it is a foul. Foul on Husky, her first. And that'll be Trend bringing it up the floor now. McCorkle from three. It's going to be short, but it's recovered by Lovell. Lovell's looking. That's a pass to number 12. And that's going to be another foul for Emma Husky, her second of the game. She's got all the fouls for the Purples right now. Lovell from three, and it's going to miss. Rebound by James. Husky shoots, she misses, but she recovers the ball, passes it out to Sanaya Shelton. Sanaya Shelton's going to find Ava Bennett on the end, and Bennett will get three. Gators throw it in, but the screen is already there. Husky on trend. Lovell's looking, and that ball is caught by Meadow Tisdale, who's going to bring it down the floor. She steps into the paint, but passes it out. That's Bennett again from three, and that will fall. Bennett consecutive threes. And that is another timeout for the Gators. Gators now down 12-0 as we are just over halfway through this first quarter. We're going to take you now live to the band cam. Greenwood marching band and concert band playing here at the Swamp. It's always great to see students out here. Thank you, Greenwood Band. And as we return to action, it's going to be Gator Ball here at the Swamp. Olivia Level will throw it in. And the Gators got to meet the press immediately. Sanai Shelton guarding Lovell. McCorkle from three. And it doesn't connect. The ball is kept inbounds, but it's caught by Olivia Overmold, number 15. Lay a trend, backcourt violation there. It will be purple ball. Gators still sit scoreless. They're looking for that opportunity to put some points on the board. And that is going to be Ava Bennett and Sanaya Shelton bringing it up. They pass it to each other. Bennett from three. And it is recovered by Lynn Kayla James. But she loses that ball to Olivia Overmole. Snatched it right out of her hands. Lay a trend from three. And it does not fall. Now it's Shelton bringing it back up the floor. Tisdale in the paint. And it falls. That's four for Tisdale now. Trent is looking. She's got to get that ball across half court. Lovell with the heave. And I don't know who that foul was on. That's a foul on Olivia Overmull, number 15 for the Gators. She's fouling Meadow Tisdale. And that is her first foul, team's first foul. The Shelton Bennett duo brings it back up the floor. It's a pass to Bennett. She's shooting from three, and this one does not fall. Bennett having a very successful night from three so far. Trend brings it across the floor into the paint. She shoots. She scores. Leia Trend with the first points for the Gators tonight. 
And, you know, maybe the Lady Gators have found their groove. You know, they've got their first points. They're ready for a comeback. But to respond to that, Ava Bennett hits another three, her third of the night, to extend a 15-point lead over the Gators for the Purples. Lovell brings it across half court. She's covered two-man screen. And she is going to get fouled by number 12, Tanaya Bailey. That's Bailey's first, team's third. Purple's racking up quite a lot of fouls here early on in this first half. So, yeah, if I'm the Purples, I would say you have to limit the turnovers and limit the fouls. Uh, that's really what's holding them down tonight. Yep, those fouls are really their biggest obstacle, but they're being very successful on the offensive end. Gators now fighting for the ball, and that's going to be purple ball here. Ava Bennett is going to throw it in. She's got four tonight. It's Anaya Shelton bringing it up the floor. She passes to Tisdale. Fumbled. Leia Trin's going to bring it down the floor. Look at the speed. She goes. She's into the paint. And that's going to be Gator ball. Lovell will throw it in. And the Gator scheme may have changed in one of those timeouts. At the beginning of the game, you know, they were shooting on the perimeter, seeing how far they could shoot um, because they weren't getting a uh, they weren't. They didn't have defense on them. But now it seems like they're playing in the paint game, and they're all they're driving, and it seems to be working for them as they've picked up a point. Yep, that's a missed shot for number 11, Kylie Elsie. And it's still Gator ball here at the Swamp. A couple substitutions for the Purples, notably number 44, Lynn Kayla James. All the way around the perimeter it goes. It ends with Elsie. She's covered. A double press there on her. But she was able to get that ball out to Avery Overmall, who is back in the game. That's such a relief for the Gators. Lay a trend to Avery Overmall. Overmall shoots and just misses off the top. And that ball is going to be recovered by number 11, Tania Fugit. And just missed there for Bennett. It's going to be Shelton bringing it around. She steps inside and misses. Little clap there. She was upset she missed that one. Yeah. It's going to be Leia Trin now on the perimeter for the Gators. She's looking for the play. She's guarded by Shelton. She hands it to Lovell, who's going to stand at the top of the key and then give it back to Trin. That ball is toppled around there by Tania Bailey who brings it down, misses her shot. That's recovered by Trin. Trin with the rebound there. 20 seconds remain here in this first half. Your score, 217. Lovell brings it inside. She's going to get fouled there by number 12, Tania Bailey. So, yeah, that's a lot of fouls tonight for the Lady Purples. They have been fouling a lot. So they are up to four in this first quarter. So, if I'm the head coach, I would tell them they need to limit the fouls. Because that is really what's slowing them down tonight. Out to Avery Overmull. She shoots. And that ball falls. That's three for Overmull. <laughs> Big shot from half court. Oh, by Shania Selton. That almost went in. As the cheerleaders rush here at the end of the first quarter. Your score, five for the Gators, 17 for the Purples. We'll be right back.
So we resume the action. Yep, we are back here at the Swamp. It's nice, Shelton with the ball. About midcourt for the Purples. Doig's gonna step up to guard Shelton. James in the paint. She recovers her rebound. And she's gonna pick up. Kylie Elsey, number 11, is going to pick up a foul there. That's gonna be the second foul for the Gators. And that's gonna send James to the line. She will miss the first free throw. However, she will make the second free throw. And those are the first free throws for the Purples on the night. So they're shooting 50% on the night. Yep, now the Gators trying to get the ball down the court. Over Mola Doig. Be inside. And that's gonna, she's gonna step outside of bounds there. Out of bounds, she's gonna step out of bounds. And it will be purple ball. Around the perimeter it goes into James in the paint. And it does not fall. Meadow Tisdale will. Tisdale's gonna pick up her first points of the quarter. So your score is 20 purples, five games. Doig's gonna throw it away. It will be recovered by McCorkle. Elsie from three, and it will just miss. Overmole in the shuffle with Tisdale, but Tisdale's gonna bring it down into the paint. She passes to James from three, and it will not fall. It's recovered by the Gators. That's going to be McCorkle out to Doy to Elsie. Gators lined up around the perimeter there, passing it around. Elsie steps inside, then it will let it fall. It's going to be Gator ball here. And checking in for the Gators is number one, Leah Trent, and number 20, Olivia Lovell. Gators have had quite the week here both here at the Swamp and in general. Their game against South Warren got canceled, but this is such a big rivalry here that it's just as important as any other game and is one of the most important games of the season for the Gators. Gators gonna have a violation there. Score 520 as we run into almost two minutes, almost two minutes in here in the second quarter. Shelton connects to Franklin. Bennett from three. It's not gonna fall this time. Fighting, it's over, Mull. Yeah, the snow this week has been crazy. It canceled a lot of games. It, it's put us out of school, so. But it was a nice snow, very icy. Lovell and Overmole pass it between each other as they try and get over. The Gators will get over the half court line, but this press is relentless from the Purples. Gators are gonna have to find a remedy to stay in this one. Trend from three, it will fall, nothing but net. Three for Leia Trend. What a three for Trend, and that, what, that's what I would say is her specialty is the deep ball. And Trent again, she's bringing it down the court. Fast break, she shoots from three. It just misses, it's recovered by Shelton. She throws it down the court to Bennett, into Tisdale. And Tisdale will bring that down. Score 22-8 here, five minutes remaining in the first half. Lovell brings it across midcourt. She tries to hand it to Overmole, but Tisdale's in the way. Overmole out to McCorkle, inside to Olivia Overmole. Trent 
out to Avery Overmold. She shoots, and it's just going to miss. That's Bennett to Shelton now for the Purples. Bennett looks, she passes to Tisdale. It's around the perimeter all the way to Franklin. Bennett from three. And another three for Ava Bennett Falls. I would say in basketball, a lot of the teams you know, have specialists. Like, you know, someone that can shoot deep balls, you know, you have to have someone in the paint, someone everywhere that can shoot from anywhere on the floor. And you need to have a, like a, a space creator, you know? So that's what I would say would be the most important thing for a team to have is a few specialists so that way they can get, you know, everything covered on the floor. Yep. Bennett definitely a elite shooter for the Purples. Purples now bring it back down the court. In for the Gators is number 12, Avery Martin. Bennett from three again. That one's not going to fall. She's got 12 on the night from three, though. Overmole inside to Lovell. Lovell's going to pick up a foul there. She's going to get fouled. And I believe those are the first free throws for the Gators of the night. Yes, these will be the first free throws for the Gators, so it'll be Lovell at the line. That's a foul on number 15, Josiah Franklin. Her first fifth for the Lady Purples. A round of substitution for the Purples. It's going to be level shooting, and she's going to miss this one. It's Shelton at midcourt. And there's going to be a 30-second timeout here. We're, we'll see you in just a second. We're back now. Shelton with the ball for the purple. She patches it to Husky. Gators now matching with a press. That's a double screen there. It's going to be another shot. And that will fall for Meadow Tisdale. Back and forth, Trent and Lovell go. Trent brings it in. Lovell tries to stop. Tisdale tries to stop that with her foot. It's a pass. Hits Overmole in the face. Tisdale is going to bring down that ball. Around the paint, Husky shoots. She scores. That's going to be three for Emma Husky, number four for the Purples. Your score, 38 here at the Swamp. Gators looking to stay in it. Avery Overmole brings it in. Her only obstacle was James, but she passed it to her sister, Olivia. Now out trend on the perimeter. It'll go around the net, but it won't go in. Shelton brings it down, and now across the court. It's a pass to Husky. It comes back around now to Tisdale. And the Gators bring it back down the court. It's going to be Trent and Lovell. Lovell guarded by Tisdale. Out to Martin. Goes back around. Trent looking to make something happen. She's guarded by Shelton. Substitution 
So your score is 8 to 30. Um, in the second quarter, with a minute and 40 seconds left, the Gators have two fouls and the Lady Purples have five. Lovell's looking. She finds Elsie, but Elsie's going to fumble with the ball there a little bit. And Shelton will bring it down to court. We'll get the points on the board for the Purples. Purples now 32 in this first half. Trend looks, she finds Lovell. They still got to get that ball across half court, and they do, but it's going to get lost in the pass. Pass from Lovell to Martin. It's going to get picked up by number 12, Tania Bailey, and it'll go out of bounds. So it will be Gator ball now. But the Gators just having a hard time getting that ball across the court, staying in this offensively, because defensively, they are working, but Elsie frustrated. She's going to come in and pick up a foul. She's looking for options. That she was just, the press was too strong there by the Purples. She was covered up. That's going to be her second foul of the game. Gators third. At the line is going to be Husky, number four. The Purples are shooting 50% on the night at the line. It's a pass to JoJo McCorkle. She brings it around. Now to Elsie. Elsie's going to bring it inside. The foul picked up on Tania Fugate, her first, team sixth. As we keep going here at the Swamp, lay a trend now around midcourt, looking for options. She passes to McCorkle. Now to Martin. Martin is covered, though. The Lady Purple defense is really strong here tonight at the Swamp. Trend shoots from three. It doesn't connect. It's brought down by London Lightning. Pass over Lightning's head. Looked like she was ready to catch that one. It went to Shelton instead. Purple's fight in the paint, and that's going to be number 11. Tanaya Fugate. Her first points of the night coming in this last minute here in the second quarter. We're 15 seconds, score 36-8. Gators drive and they're looking. Martin shoots from three. It doesn't fall. Now Husky and Shelton are looking. That's a pass deep to number 12. She shoots, she misses. McCorkle brings it out. She'll get the rebound, but she won't get any points. Just too far of a throw. That's gonna be our ending point here at the half. That is eight for your Lady Gators and 36 for the Lady Purples. We'll be back in half. We'll be back in around 10 minutes with your halftime report. We'll see you there.
All righty, we are back here at the Swamp, ready for some third quarter action, some second half action. The score, 8-36. Your Gators down. It's going to be purple ball. Shelton's going to throw it in. Shelton had six in the first half for the Lady Purples. Tisdale drives in. She's going to put the first points on the board for the half. That's, Tisdale now has 12 on the night. Trends looking. She finds level. The press is still persistent here in the second half. Big connection down to McCorkle. James really wanted to steal there. I'm able to lock it down. McCorkle is going to bring it around. Level shoots, and it's off the mark. So, yeah, it seems that the, the Lady Purples are keeping with the same scheme. They're playing man-on-man -man defense, even two to a person sometimes. And it's really hard to get a pass off that. So they're capitalizing on that opportunity, getting lots of turnovers, steals, and fast break points. Yep, Gators not matching the press, which is a good strategy. Keep your defense down. Oh, big block there by, block by Olivia Overmole. Number 15, the senior for the Gators. You can see at the top of your screen, the swamp starting to get back. It is big homecoming night here. Homecoming festivities will be between the games. Now McCorkle. She's going to pick up a travel there. It'll be purple ball. Shelton and Husky are going to bring it up. They both had a great first half. Shelton put up six points. Husky, five. Both adding what they can to this purple offense. Yeah, and the purple seem to uh, be running an offensive scheme where, you know, they're driving in, and that seems to be working as they are up big in this third quarter. Almost a loose pass there to Tisdale, but she's able to keep it alive. Now into the paint. Pass to James. James is going to get wrapped up like a Subway sandwich. That's going to be a foul for the Gators. Olivia Overmole is going to pick up the foul there. James shooting at the line. That's so going to be the first foul of the half. So she's shooting 75. She's shooting, yeah, 75% um, in this game. And that means that the uh, Lady Purples are shooting 50% on the night. Level bringing it in. Doesn't matter how many defenders she has. She's going to keep charging through. That was three she passed before she passed it off. It's brought down, it doesn't fall. Avery Overmall passes to Trin. Trin, top of the key, she's looking for options. Trin shoots, she scores. Trin gonna put up her first points of the half. Yeah, in the half, she is all drained at no faucet. She's doing great. Those are going to be points for James on the other end of the floor. Score now 42-10. Your Gators down. It's lost in Shelton's legs. Trin's going to bring it into the paint. Goes for the layup, misses. It will fall for Olivia Overmole. What a put back by Overmole. The way she was able to grab the rebound and then put it back up very quickly to get the putback points. Yep, the Gators being able to respond on the offensive end is one of their great advantages, but they've just not been able to capitalize on capitalize on that tonight. Tisdale inside. She's going to put up a layup. Tisdale, just an absolute threat for the Gators tonight. It's brought down by Lovell. Avery Overmole with the screen. Pass to Trin. Trin shoots. It's missed but it's deflected out by Olivia Overmole out to Trin, and Trin will get the shots. Yeah, and Trin is going to hit open shots all day long. So if you're the Purples, you have always got to have somebody on her, or else you're in for a rough night. James shoots. She scores. James having a much more successful second half here for the Purples. 
She's one of the premier shooters for the Purples. Only had one point in the first half. And tonight, already in the second half, we're not even halfway through the third quarter. She's already got six points. Out to Lovell, she drives inside. Bit of a Euro step there. And she's gonna bring it down, Olivia Lovell. Maybe she's been watching some film of James Harden recently. That shot is good for Meadow Tisdale. Score 16-48 here at the Swamp. To McCorkle, the ball does get across half court in time. It's down to Overmall. She's wide open, and she will take that layup, put it on the board. Overmall with four here in the second half. James is going to get fouled. And that's going to be foul on number 21, Avery Overmole, her first of the game. That's going to be team second here in this half. Kind of a reverse of last game, or last half, I should say. Gators now picking up more fouls than the Purples. So one of the weaknesses of the Purples in the first half kind of being reverted here in the second as they slowly pull away. Yeah, and I guess that's just something that they talked about in the locker room. Overmull passes to Lovell. She's got to go. She gets it down court to McCorkle, and McCorkle will get it through. That pass was looking for Olivia Overmull. It's going to be intercepted by Meadow Tisdale. She brings it down the court. Pass out to Tania Bailey. She shoots, she scores. Tania Bailey with three here in the second half. Her first points of the game. Has a pass deep, almost the same play. Oh, McCorkle will steal it back. Tisdale clearly frustrated with that. Lay a trend around James in for the points. And Trin will pick up two more here. She's now outscored herself in the first half. She got 11 on the night. Husky brings it across with Shelton. Yeah, and this second half has been a lot more productive than the first half for both of these teams. Husky shoots from three. It's going to be right under the net. And Lovell picks that up in the paint. Trend brings it down the floor. The press has slowed down here against the Gators. Trend drives in. Looks to shoot. She misses. Foul's going to be on number four, Husky. It's going to be her third. She picks up the first foul for Bowling Green here in this second half. Trend now at the line. She's going to be shooting two. She makes the first. In for the Gators is Martin and Elsie. Out for the Purples is James and Tisdale. Both very effective here on the floor tonight, as they are every night for the Purples. And yeah. Trin makes both of her free throws here. Yeah, like I said earlier, if Trin has an open shot anytime, she is going to make it. So that is something that the Gators need to capitalize on um, later in this game. Yeah, Gators are going to have to find open looks. That's out to Bailey. Bailey shoots. She scores. Ava Bennett. Her first three of the second half. Her fifth of the night. Tania Shelton brings it down the floor. She passes it out to Husky. Husky shoots from three. It's going to go over the net. Brought down by Shelton. And there's going to be a foul on the play. It's fouls on number 20, Olivia Lovell. It's going to be her first of the game. Gators third this quarter. Minute 25 left here in the half in the first, in the third quarter. Gators 22 with that free throw by Shelton. That's going to be 56 for the Purples. And make it 57. Shelton sinks both. Level the trend. Brings it down the court. Trend to this right side. Martin sets the pick. Trend drives inside. She shoots. It's going to be off the mark. 
that's going to be a foul on number three, Shania Shelton. Her first of the game. That'll be the team's second in the half. Trend back at the line now. She sinks the first. And in for the Gators is Doig for Lovell. And she's going to make the second. Trend four for four from the free throw line. They call it the charity stripe, and those are just free points for Leia Trend. She's consistently making those points. That's going to be a foul on the Gators. Number five, Jessica Peterson. She's going to be picking up her first foul of the game here. Gators fourth. At the line is number 15, Josiah Franklin. Husky's taking her spot on the bench now as Briley subbed in for her. Franklin misses the shot. It's recovered by the Purples. Now Gators. Peterson runs right into Bailey. It's going to be a jump ball, which will be Gator position. Elsie's going to throw it in. 25 seconds remain here in this third quarter. Yes, yeah, so the Gators have to count on something really quick if they want to get some points before. Elsie keeps that ball alive. Now this game is over 30 points, so it is running clock. So we're 10 seconds out as the Gators look to throw it in bounds. Five seconds now. Doig's looking. She's looking. Trin shoots. It's going to be blocked by number 12, Bailey. And that will be the end of your third quarter. Score at the end of the third quarter, 24 for your Lady Gators, 58 for the Lady Purples. We'll be right back. We'd like to give a quick shout out to your Greenwood Gator Band. Thank you for supporting our athletics here, band. Gators now playing Go Big Color. And we are now getting back to the game. It's going to be purple ball as we resume. In, in from Briley, it's going to be number 24, Campbell. Stolen by Trin, she brings it down into the paint. She shoots, she scores. Trin, her 12th of the night. 17th of the night, 12th of the half. She's going to start the Gator momentum off. She gets another steal. Trin bringing it down the court. Steps inside, but she passes to Avery Overmull. Goes back out to the perimeter. Big pass to Lovell. Lovell into the paint. She's going to get blocked by number 54, Lightning. And the Purples are going to look to set up their own play now here on the offensive end. Shot by number 24, Campbell. She's good. Campbell for three now. As the Gators bring it back. Score 26-61. 
As we're a minute here into the final quarter here at the Swamp. Lady Gators just looking to get some points on the board. Work on some productivity on the offensive end. It's a shot by level, it doesn't fall. Purple's now on their own end. It's brought in by number 15. Level went for the block. She's gonna pick up a foul. That was number 15, Josiah Franklin bringing it in. Level's gonna pick up her second foul of the night. Fifth of the teams. Half. It's good for Franklin. So your score is 26 Lady Gators. 62, Lady Brickles. And that second one is not going to fall. Trend from three. It's good. Trend. Quite an impressive display here in this second half. Trend's got 15 in the half with a quick response by number 13, Natalia Wardlow, getting her first points of the night. Overmole to Overmole, it's now in the paint. It's gonna be a missed shot for number 15, Olivia. Gators getting very aggressive. They're just trying to get some points on the board. They wanna stay in this game. As far out as they may seem, they're gonna give the Purples a fight. Yeah. And I think that's one of the great qualities of a team is whenever they can fight to the end, no matter the score. Yeah, the Gators aren't out of this. They're going to keep fighting. They're going to keep playing. They're going to keep working on their skills and see what happens at the end of the game when time's out. Shot. It doesn't fall. Lightning fights for the rebound, but it's picked up by Trin. Past the level. She gets it out to Trin. Trin shoots. Trin scores. And Trin has been shooting the lights out in the fourth quarter. 20, yeah, 23 for Trin tonight. She's been going crazy in this fourth quarter. And McCorkle, McC good from three. And McCorkle says, hey, Trin, let me have a turn. Let me shoot some threes. So I think if they can, you know, ping pong back and forth with all these threes, then maybe the Gators could have a chance in this game. Timeout called here. Your score, 35-64, with just under five minutes remaining. Back in action here at the Swamp. Shot by number five, Chloe Potter. It doesn't fall. In the paint, Lightning is fighting for it. It'll be Gator Ball. Level now, throwing it in. Abby Walker brings it down for the Gators. To Elsie. Elsie inside. She's blocked by Lightning. Peterson with wild throw intended for Walker. And it's going to be purple ball now. So the Gators put some fresh faces out there to see if they can rejuvenate this offense. Under four minutes now remaining in the game as the Purples take over. It's 35-64 here at the Swamp. Your Gators down. Lightning in the paint, she shoots. Doesn't fall, she shoots again. Another one and it falls. London Lightning. And the bench goes wild. 
London, a senior at Bowling Green. That's going to be Elsie bringing it in. Foul on number 23, Paris Wardlow, her first. The team's now tied at five fouls each. It's going to be Gator recover that. Peterson passes to Doig. Doig from three. It's going to miss. Coachella in the paint blocked by number 32. Capcella. Now Peterson shoots. It doesn't fall. Doig picks it up. Doig shoots. She makes it. Her first points of the night. Score 37-66. Now purple ball. Around the perimeter. Shot. Doesn't fall. Doig and Walker get that one together. Walker looks for Doig. She's going to overthrow it just a little bit. Pass around. It's going to be Chloe Potter shooting. Walker gets that. She brings it down the court. She's got the speed. She looks for the pass for Cupcella, and the ball's going to go out of bounds. Running clock. We are now under two minutes here in this fourth quarter, so Drew is going to take over for the rest of the game. Dribbling up the court um, is the Bowling Green Clippers, and they'll have it on the perimeter, so they're just going to pass around for a little bit. And they cannot find an open shot, and so LZ will pick up the foul. Um, so number 32, I believe, will be at the line. So the Purples have been shooting decent tonight at the line. Not too good, not too bad. They've made a few, missed a few. Um, so, so Elsie will get the ball in the corner and will drive in and score. And that was a pretty good shot. It was from behind the net. Uh, that's pretty hard to do. So the Purples will dribble it up on the court. And a big three will be missed for the Purples. So they'll drive in. And they'll make it on the layup. So Walker will dribble it up and pass to Peterson. Peterson will drive. However, she will be blocked. So Peterson, no. So the Gators will get the ball. Oh, so there will be a technical foul on number 23. So Doig will be at the line. So she'll miss her first. And I believe she will get a second. So she'll make the second, so she will get to shoot. Nope, Gators will get possession. And throwing it in for the Gators will be number three, Coachella. Coachella will pass it into Walker. Walker will dribble it up, and she will pass it back to Coachella. Coachella to Doi, there on the corner, and that'll be a pass to LZ, and LZ will make the three. Nope, she will not make the three. So driving in will be the Lady Purples, and they'll shoot from the perimeter. And that'll be a splash for the purples. Let me get this camera lined up. My bad. I'm sorry about that. So with six seconds left, LZ will take a shot. And, oh, it was really close. It, it was rimming out. And so the final score will be 73 Lady Purples, 40 Lady Gators. Um, so we'll be back in just a minute for the boys game and homecoming festivities. And I'm Drew Porter, my co-host was Tyler, and we'll be signing off for now.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the campus of Greenville High School. It is our pleasure to present to you the 2022 Basketball Hall of Fame candidates. These young ladies were selected as representatives by their graduating classes. Assisting in tonight's ceremony is Greenville High School Navy Junior ROTC Honor Guard, Commander Rutland, Ensign Gross, Chief Roller, Chief Ross, Petty Officer Ballard, Petty Officer Hughes, Pet Petty Officer Ariel Brown, Petty Officer Stern, Petty Officer Olivia Brown, Petty Officer Wimpy, Petty Officer Garcia Floyd. Freshman candidate Miss Savannah Love. Savannah is the daughter of Tammy and Tracy Love. She is being escorted by Ryan Hunt. Savannah is a member of the War Club, Beta Club, and is a member at Woodburn Baptist Church. Freshman candidate, Miss Allison Short. Allison is the daughter of Riley Short and Paul Short. She is being escorted by Carrie Hanlon. Allison is a member of Hillview Heights Church, performs as a Phoenix leader, plays tennis, and volunteers at WKU. Freshman candidate, Miss Maggie Stewart. Maggie is the daughter of Angie and Kevin Stewart. She is being escorted by Jake Owen Chavez. Maggie is a member of the Greenwood Band, Orchestra, Academic Team, Beta, and Christ Episcopal Church. <laughs> Sophomore candidate, Ms. Natalia Archegas. Natalia is the daughter of Karina and Raul Archegas. She is being escorted by Eli Duffer. Natalia is a member of the Boy Club, German Club, Beta Club, and the Lady Gator Lacrosse Team. Sophomore candidate, Miss Addison Gordon. Addison is the daughter of Gina and Chris Gordon. She is being escorted by Sam Moore. Addie is a Greenwood cheerleader. She is a coach for the G League cheerleading team and a member of Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Sophomore candidate, Miss Ellie Bell. Ellie is the daughter of Kimmy French Bell. She is being escorted by Levi Gilbert. Ellie is a member of FBLA, Beta Club, Drama Club, the Greenwood High School Band, GHS Orchestra, GHS Musical, and the WKU Pre-College Strange Program. <laughs> Junior candidate is Micah Edwardswood. Micah is the daughter of Stacey Matthews and Joe Edwardswood. She is being escorted by Bobby Flynn. Micah is a member of Student Council, NHS, German Club, Greenwood Archery, and the Western Kentucky Bow Hunters Archery Program. <laughs> Junior candidate Miss Abby Carroll. Abby is the daughter of Kelly and Scott Carroll. She is being escorted by Chase Johnson. Abby is a member of the War Club, an officer for SCCLA, and a member of Billy Young Church. <laughs> Junior candidate Miss Taylor Davis. Taylor is the daughter of Anne-Marie she is being escorted by Brayden Johnson. Taylor is a member of the Greenville High School cheerleading team, Cheerville Athletics All-Star cheerleading team, and the Orphanage. <laughs> Junior candidate is Lily Alford. Lily is the daughter of Mary and Kim Alford. She is being escorted by Michael Lennon. Lily is a member of the FFA, Orpha, FCCLA, and Crossland Community Church. Senior candidate, Ms. Kennedy Clark. Kennedy is the daughter of Carly and Robin Clark. She is being escorted by Paige Dennis. Kennedy is a member of the Board Club, FCA, FBLA, and the Greenwood Swim Team. Senior candidate, Ms. Mia Gonzalez. Mia is the daughter of Jennifer Gonzalez and Ralph Gonzalez. She is being escorted by Jaden Baggett. Mia is a member of NHS and KYA. She is an officer for FBLA, the graphic designer and social media manager for Orca, and the vice president of Beta. 
senior candidate, Ms. Emma Lord. Emma is the daughter of Sarah and John Lord. She's being escorted by Jack Buchanan. Emma is a member of Beta Club National Honor Society, the Lady of Volleyball Team, Christ Festival Church Youth Group, and the Vice President of Orville. Senior candidate, Ms. Olivia Lover. Olivia is the daughter of Kelly and Mark Lover. She's being escorted by Aaron Brown. Olivia is a member of the Lady Gator basketball team, volleyball team, and track and field team. She is currently the student council vice president, a four club officer, and a member of the Beta, NHS, and FCA club in Greenville. <laughs> Senior candidate is Olivia Overbull. Olivia is the daughter of Sue and Peter Overbull. She is being escorted by Nathan Baggett. Olivia is a member of Greenville Beta, NHS, Student Council, the Greenwood Volleyball, Basketball, and Tennis Team, and participates in the Holy Spirit Youth Group. Our 2022 Basketball Homecoming Princess is Ms. Lennon McCoy. Lennon is the three-year-old daughter of Will and Brittany McCoy. Will is a teacher of boys basketball center here at Greenwood. Lennon and Joe's family will be down walking through and cover pigs and going to Rubico Soda Fest on Saturday. She also 